Praise the Lord. It is good to be here again with all the saints of the Lord. Amen. Uh, we're studying out of the book of 1 Samuel. And we've been studying out of it for several weeks now. And uh, we're in chapter 25. And uh, we left off in verse 29. That's where we're going to pick up at. 1 Samuel 25, verse 29. Now we've been studying about how David had went up into the wilderness and he found a place called Carmel where there was a a festival of sheep shearing, and the man that owned the land was named Nabal, and he had a wife named Abigail. And Nabal, Nabal's name means a fool. A fool. A fool. That's so his he name. like a fool. A fool. He's a fool. And uh, he, said that he said that he was a churlish man, which means he's a stingy old coot. That's what okay. How many of you have met one of those? Means, huh? I was like, and how many people have we met like that? Yeah, a few stingy old coots. Okay, but uh, Nabal refused to give uh, David's men some, some food from the festival. And this, this festival was a huge festival, so they had, they had plenty. And he just didn't want to share it with them. Well, David decides to go to war with this man. And uh, Abigail, his, uh, Nabal's wife, goes to... Uh, to David and his men with a bunch of food and a bunch of wine, and she asked for forgiveness. So that's where we're that's where we're at in the story. And so verse 29, let's pick up on verse 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue, pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thine enemies shall he sling out as out of a, the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causelessly, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And we'll stop there at the end of that verse, verse 31. Uh, verse 29 has something that said uh, that Abigail said that, she, that David would be bound in the bundle of life. That, what does that mean? Does anybody know what that might mean? Well, according to mine, my, my version says, even when you are chased by those who seek to kill you, your life is safe and in the care of the Lord your God. Secure is his, treasures, in his treasure pouch. That the lives of your enemies will disappear like stones shot from a sling. That's great. The treasure pouch. I like that. Now, if this one, this particular word, bound in the bundle of life, was something that that uh, Middle Eastern people say. Okay? And uh, if we're going to say it in Hebrew, it would be, Sayar, Sayor, I. Okay? <laughs> Sayar <laughs> means bound. Sayor means the bag or the package, right, that we were talking about. And I, H-A-Y, means living. So, say our means shut up or besieged. Uh, we, we are, uh, David was safe in the Lord's package. You know, sometimes we want to package ourselves, right? I just got some new clothes, right? So, I got a new package, right? Amen. But the Lord, the Lord is our package. We, we want to be in the package that he has, right? Amen. And we, he, we, we want him to cover us. Uh, uh, you know, the Bible says he gives good gifts unto men. And you know, sometimes that gifts is, is you. And me, you know what I'm saying? Amen. John, you're a gift to me from God. You know what I'm saying? You're a package that God gives away. You know? You're bound in the bundle of life. Now, David, uh, she also said something would happen, and I know you already read it once, and I read it once. What will happen, according to Abigail, I have to believe that she's a type of prophetess, because she's saying things that's going to happen in the future. Okay? But what did she say would happen to David's enemies? They would die. And how would they die, though? Kind of tells you, a, uh, she gives you a quite flowery word. They disappear like stones shot from a sling. Right, like a stone shot from a sling. Now, y'all remember that as we're reading this. There's going to be a, there's going to be something happen in the story that has to do with the stone, okay? And it has to do with Abigail. Uh, now, Abigail recognized the voice of God. I really believe she did because she was 
warning David about something. Now, what does she warn David about in her little prophecy here? She warned about something that could happen to any of us if we're not careful. She warned him about mistakes from your past haunting you in your future. How many people can say that mistakes from your past can haunt you in the future, whether you're a Christian or not? Yeah. Your past can haunt you. And she was telling David, basically, if you take the, 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 uh, the vengeance of God in your own hands, that you'll remember this. She said, so you won't have any grief on you. That word, that word grief in uh, was where verse 31 uh, is, a, is a stumbling block. Okay? The Hebrew word, if you want to know it, is pukwa. P-U-Q-A. And then she also says something else. She says, she don't want you to have a stumbling block. And then she says, offense of heart. And that, that word offense there is mikshal, which means cause to fall. So she doesn't want him to have a stumbling block, and she doesn't want him to have a cause to fall in the future. But we know that David, David did, was known as a man of war and had a problem. And she had warned him about it years before he got to be an old man. Okay. Now she also gave him some reasons that might cause these things in David's life. Grief and offense of heart. First was shedding of blood causelessly. And that the word causelessly there in Hebrew is hinnan, H-I-N-N-A-M. And it means uh, devoid of reason or advantage. The other reason was revenge or avenge, vengeance. I, want, I, I made a note here also. Remember that you cannot save yourself. That's right. When we do, when we try to fit, save ourselves, we fail God. Why do we fail God? Who is our salvation? Is it me? No. It's God. When David was saying, we will, we will avenge ourselves, or if you say that, you're saying you don't want God because God is your avenger. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You don't want His salvation. You have your own. If you take vengeance into your own hands. And I think a lot of people have made that mistake. Trying to be vengeful in the church. Ooh. You ever meet somebody that's trying to ven be vengeful to other Christians? <laughs> uh -huh. You know? Well, he did that to me. He said that. Or she said that. And then all of a sudden you're saying all kinds of horrible things about other people and hurting people. Yep. Yes? I'll say it again. Church folks are scary. They are. They can be. They can run you off. They can. They can run you all. And they, and they want to sometimes. Ooh. Yes, they do. That's not good at all. A backslidden Christian is scary, scary, scary. It's hard to deal with. Yeah, especially if they're in your church trying to stir up trouble. Yeah, they're bitter. Yeah, they're bitter. But they, but they, they want everybody to be like them for some reason. Let me, let me throw this in at no extra charge. You know it says there's seven things, six things the Lord hates, and yea, seven is an abomination to him. And one of them is he that sells discord among the brethren. Yes, yeah. yes. That's bad. Yes, it is. I've often said it's easier to witness a person and don't know anything about the Lord, about the church, than it is to a backslider. Yes. Okay, and then one other thing about Abigail before we continue on with the story is that she told David, when, when all this is over with, please remember me. And she called herself a slave again, one more time. She called herself a slave, I believe, 14 times in these verses uh, to David. A handmaiden. A handmaiden means a woman's slave. Okay? Um, and also, I was, I was pointing out last week that she is a battered wife. She's a typical battered wife. She has a churlish husband. And that's you can't even talk to him, is what they said. Right. And if a wife can't talk to her husband, who can she talk to? That's I mean, right. Yeah. You know? That's right. Okay, let's go on to verse 32. David said to Abigail, this is David spares Nabal. Oh, boy. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel which sent thee to me this day. Blessed be thy advice. Blessed be thou which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast came 
to meet me. Surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisses against the wall. So David received of her hand, that's what she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened unto thy voice, and have accepted thy person. Okay. David says, Blessed be thy advice, and blessed are you. Now, who, who remembers the Hebrew word for blessed? I don't want to remember that word for some reason. Barack, Barack. It's Barack. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Uh, now, she, he said, blessed be thy advice. I like that word. I, your version may say something different. I looked it up in Hebrew. It says, te'am, which means discretion and understanding. Remember we read about Abigail that not only was she beautiful, but she was intelligent. And sometimes that's lacking in beautiful women. True. It's true. It's true. And beautiful men. Uh -huh. I've seen some of the stupidest men that were uh -huh. thought they themselves handsome or something, you know. Yeah. But she wasn't like that. She was humble and, and, and intelligent and had understanding. And I also want to point out that sometimes we need help. They, they wanted to kill somebody. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to kill somebody? <laughs> and David needed someone to calm him down. Uh -huh. You ever needed someone to calm you down? Yes. Uh huh. I have. Me I know too. Joyce and me have. I'm not not against each other lately, but. <laughs> <laughs> you just got back from Cover Street, right? Lately. 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 So what are you saying? That the person you wanted to kill was Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I never wanted to kill her. No, no, no. I'm not lying either. <laughs> okay. Sound advice goes a long way. I want you all to look up three scriptures for me as we study our Bibles, right? That's what we're here for. Amen. Psalms 141, verse 5. And Proverbs 9, 9. Psalms 141, 5. Proverbs 9, 9. And Proverbs 25, 12. So Proverbs 9, 9. 25, 12. And Psalms 141, 5. Anybody got Yes, go ahead. 41.5. Let the godly strike me. It will be a kindness. If they, if they correct me, it will be soothing medicine. Don't let them refuse it. But I pray constantly against the wicked and their deeds. So what does that verse tell us? About, the godly strike. Yeah, about being chastised. Or even struck, it said in your version, I think. Didn't it? Strike me. Striking you. Uh, if a righteous man strikes you, you're supposed to say, thank God. <laughs> I needed that. Oh, I needed that. Right? I needed that. Call me down, right? How about Proverbs 9.9? 9? Proverbs 9.9. 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. Yes. You know, Mark Twain said that you know, when, when he was 17, he thought he was smarter than his father, right? And he says, well, he got to be 21. He says, my hell, my dad got smarter in a few years. Yeah. <laughs> Don't all 17-year-olds think that? Yeah, how, how much more has my dad learned since I grew up? Right? That's right. <laughs> okay, who's got Proverbs 25, verse 12? Okay. Yes. An obedient ear. Someone who can listen and hear. An obedient ear is like a gold ring. Okay. Okay. Now, in verse, let's go back to our scriptures. Back to 1 Samuel 25. And y'all look at verse 34. And we'll keep going and studying these words and such. Um, it says that someone kept David back from hurting Abigail. Who kept David back from hurting Abigail? According to the Bible. The Lord. The Lord kept him back from hurting her. Mm -hmm. He had every intention on slaughtering people in that in, in Carmel. He was a little ticked. Yes, he was. He stated that if Abigail had not visited him, every man, and it says everyone that pisses against the wall, and that means every man yeah. would be killed. Everybody in Nabal's employ would have been killed. Sheep shearers. Why would you go around killing sheep shearers? 
You know what I'm saying? People that take care of sheep. But that's what David was going to do. But God stopped him. Now, in verse 35, three things David granted Ab Abigail for her wisdom. Three things. First one, she said, go in peace. Now, what does peace mean? What is it, what is it in Hebrew first? Shalom. shalom. And what does it mean? What does shalom mean? Holy, complete. Salvation. Salvation, whole, complete. Prosperity, riches, wealth, health. That's a lot, right? All in the word shalom. Go in shalom. And then, she, then the other thing she was granted, it says David hearkened unto her voice. And the word hearkened there is shema, which means to hear intelligently. Have you ever heard somebody unintelligently? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> or I thought you said, oh, it's worse than marriage because what you said, especially men, wasn't really what you said. But it certainly sounded that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> I know men go, oh, man, why did I say that? Uh -huh. You know, wish I didn't say that. But she, she, he, he heard her intelligently. He listened to her voice. The third thing was he accepted her person. Now that word accepted is nasa, and it means exalt, bear, or carry up, or lift up. And her person is her presence. In other words, uh, he, he uh, accepted her, her, her person, her, her countenance. In other words, he liked her, even though she was married. Okay, verse 36. We haven't got there yet. Now this is where we get to where Nabal, I'm going to finish this one, I think. Where Nabal, it says, And Abigail came to Nabal. And behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote Nabal, and he died. So David didn't have to do anything. David did not have to do a thing. Now, remember that Abigail is an abused wife. Right. And uh, earlier in uh, verse, chapter 25, verse 17, it says, No one can talk to Nathan. Right. So uh, she decided not to talk to him because he was drunk. Right. You ever try to talk, talk to a drunk person? It doesn't work real well sometimes. And try to convince them of something? You know what I mean? Like talking to that wall. It is. Yeah. It's like talking to that wall if you're talking to somebody who's inebriated with alcohol or drugs. I mean... And, and you want to convince them of something. It you know, it's really, really hard. you got to wait till they're sober. Yeah. Or you got God's going to have to sober them up some way. Um, you know? Or he could have just fired him up a little bit and it might make things worse. Oh, he probably would have beat her because that, that's the kind of man he was. <laughs> she knew not to speak to a churlish man, right? Right. And when Abigail told Nabal how David had spared them, and remember they were not a military outpost there. All of Nabal's talk was going to get him killed because he didn't have a military. David had a military. He had a lot of men. Yeah, that'd be like, you know, okay, just, you know, going against the Mexican cartel. Exactly. See what they do. They're going to hurt you? Yes. And David was like that. I mean, they, they, they were savage people back then. They killed people. But I mean, he's the one that kept Nabal's farm and family and sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when he heard this, when Nabal heard this, how did it affect him? Mm, Two things. Like Two things it says. When I first read it, I thought he just had a heart attack. But it says his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. Remember what Abigail prophesied? That all your enemies would be like a stone slung out of a sling. Okay. So you see the correlation there. The other thing is that he was paralyzed. Because he was still alive, his heart had hurt him, and he was not able to move for 10 days. Right? He had a stroke. He had a stroke. Uh -huh. He had a heart attack, and he had a stroke. And then 10 days later, did the heart attack kill him? Did the stroke kill him? The Lord did. No. 
God did. God did. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. Vengeance is mine. And uh, Nabal was just like a projectile, a stone projectile that was cast into a grave. All right, verse 39. We'll continue on with this particular story. A little bit of time. When David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. When the servants of David came to Abigail to Carmel, they spake to her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. She arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thine handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Abigail hastened, arose, and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her, and she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Now I'm going to stop there. Joyce, would you pass something out for me? Right here. Because you're a servant of your husband. <laughs> 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 I'm, not gonna ask, I'm, not, I'm not gonna ask her to wash my feet though. Okay? Well, you can ask her to wash your back. I'm sure. Oh right? yeah, I, she's done that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've washed for another year. Yeah, <laughs> I've waited another year for a couple. You of may years. not have asked for it, but I did it. That's by right. Golly. That's all right. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're, while, while she's passing that out, I'm going to continue teaching this because we only have a few more minutes. But, but you know, one thing about David that, that, uh, that happened when, uh, when, when the, she, he found out Nabal was dead, you know, he blessed the Lord because God had taken care of his problems, right? Right. And you know that it's a, but you, there's a universal law that everybody knows what goes around comes around. Yep. If you do something bad to someone, you're going to get something bad done to you. When it's you just a law. It is a law. It's not a law of the Bible. It's a law of the land. And it happens. If you treat people bad, it's going to come back at you. It's going to come right back at you. Okay, and what did what did David thank God for? That he's the one that did the... He's the one that struck him dead. Exactly. Him, you know... It says, uh, what, I like the one, the, I don't know what your version says, but it says, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded my cause. I look at the word pleaded. And the word in Hebrew is rib, R-I-B. And it means to grapple or contend or to debate. And you think about it, God is the grappler against the demons of our lives. Mm -hmm. we, we fight against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places. And He is the grappler. He's the one that's going to cast down every imagination that comes up against him. And, and we are his mouthpieces. And we are, we are his, his servants. And David recognized this. Okay? You want, to read, you want me to read my version? Yes, please. He said, when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise the Lord who avenged the insult I received from Nabal and kept me from doing it myself. Nabal, was received, Nabal has received the punishment for his sin. And then, of course, it goes on that David sent messengers to Abigail to ask her to become his wife. Right. Okay. Now, it says here that David sent and communed with Abigail. That word commune there is debar, which is a, which is a regular word. Uh, we, they use it a lot. It means to speak to her, talk to her. Now, let me ask you something. This lost your husband. You didn't like him very much, but <laughs> you lost him. And then you get a letter from someone telling you that they want to marry you. Women, how would you feel? How would you feel if you got a letter saying, the guy didn't come to you, he sent the messenger with a letter? Well, I mean, you've got to look at the big picture. First of all, she was an abused wife, but she knew that David had taken care of them. So, I mean, there must have been some gratefulness in her heart. She yes. knew that she would be taken care of, too, because, you know, when she went to him and gave him all this, what did he do? He blessed her. He said, go in peace. She had already prophesied over him that he would be, you know, she had already prophesied over him. So it's like, it was like her refuge. Yes. And you think about it, a widowed woman in the Middle East? Yeah. What happens to widowed woman, women? Well, I mean, she's not Hebrew. And she was also close to God, so I feel like she had probably already knew something. Ah, yeah. maybe she already knew this. Yeah. Right. 
Okay. I believe I believe a person like that believes that if, if they're that close to God, then they also know God will take care of us. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And God does take care of them. You think about a widowed woman. Usually, like in the Hebrew, you'd have to have your brothers go and marry. Her, right. You know, but we don't know that what this society was like, especially being under Nabal. Okay, because he had his own little kingdom going there. You know. Right. Now. Now, the way that uh, she reacted to this, she arose, she bowed herself to the ground, and then she just she she offered to wash the feet of the of the uh, servants of David. Now, I have a word study here that I gave y'all. We've studied wo foot washing before in this church back when right. we did our doctrines because uh, this church, this denomination, believes that Jesus washes washed the feet of his disciples and he said go and do likewise so we also believe in foot washing symbolically especially you know because we should not be above anybody exactly anybody okay uh, again I pass this out and uh, we do have time somebody pick out a scripture out of these foot washings and read them to me okay Genesis uh, 18 verse 4 let a little water, I pray you, be fixed, and wash your feet, and rest yourself out of the tree. Amen. Now, this was a very humbling experience because only servants were supposed to wash people's feet. Right. Okay, only servants. Okay, who's got another one? Anybody want to read another one? Yes, sir. I got some of the St. John's, all three of them here. Go for it. John 13, 3 through 5. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he rose up from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Mm -hmm. John 13 and 14. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Amen. In John 13, 6 through 10, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I wash thee not, then thou hast no part in me. Wow. Jesus yeah. said to him, This is the this, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knoweth like oh, that's it. Yeah, that's the end of that. Yeah, because he goes on and talks about Judas and all that. Okay. So what if Jesus said this is it important? Uh, yes. Yeah. It's very important. Mm -hmm. And what was the symbol there? What did, what did he? What was he actually saying about being clean? He says you can't be clean if he doesn't wash you thoroughly, right? Well, so it's, well I, not just physically, but I think he was talking about um, um, humility. Yes, absolutely. Because you look at Judas, and I've studied Judas many times because. You know, Judas really didn't have a choice in what he did. But he did have a choice in how he repented. Now, question about Judas. You know, you know Judas committed suicide, right? Right. Okay. And you know Judas betrayed Jesus with 30 pieces of silver. Right? Now, what, what will be your reason? Why would you think Judas betrayed Jesus? Or did he betray Jesus? Okay. Judas was the guy with the money bag, right? Mm -hmm. And he believed in the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And he was a chosen one. I mean, Jesus was the chosen one. He believed that. He was also there when God gave them the great commission to go out and heal people. Right. So Judas could heal people. So he had these powers, just like the other disciples had. And he had the money. Yeah. And he expected Jesus to be the coming king of Israel and all the world. What better to force him to, 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 to be king? How come he's not being king? How come he's all humble and all this stuff? He needs to take control of this situation, take over the world. 
How are we going to do that? Well, we'll make him. We'll make him face Herod and and the and the, uh, and the Sanhedrin. We'll make him. I'll make him become what he's supposed to be. And then he found out Jesus was a humble person, like a sheep led to the slaughter, and they killed him. Well, that that really bummed the man out, and he went and killed himself. Uh, did uh, did he go to heaven? You know, only we'll know when we get there. We'll know when we get there. Because uh, at the last moment he asked for forgiveness, we don't know. We don't know what his last breath was. I imagine it would have been one of the hardest things for Judas because I think he was like I said. I think he, I he was a man that was wanting to see Israel triumph, but he thought it'd be like war, like fighting, like you know, like everybody else is in the military. Or, you know, you don't you don't you don't beat people with kindness anymore, do you? Do you win by loving people? Yeah. Yeah, we win by loving people. You know? And uh, I know I got the subject to see This was a different type of war than what he was used to having. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know what? The church is, the needs to realize that's the type of war we need to have is the type of war where love conquers all. That's right. You know, it'll heat coals upon the ISIS if we pray for them and love them. Oh, even yes. though they're killing people. Well, but God the, can change that. But the natural man still is looking for a fight. I know. Yeah. And this is a fight that, that that's not with fist, but with, you might say, words or the heart. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. Now, but, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you know, Israel was looking for Jesus, for the Messiah. And they'd already figured out how it was going to happen. And that's the conflict that we're all in is we think we want God to do it our way. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm embarrassed to say I do that all the time. We want God to do it our way, and God is not going to do that. He's going to do it how He wants to do it. Amen. Okay, now let me go back to our study. i got one more verse I want, I want to mention before we close. Verse 42 Verse 42 says that Abigail went to David upon her ass with five damsels. Okay? Now, what I want to point out right now is, is David is getting more than he bargained for. Are y'all listening? David is getting more than he bargained for. Uh, he gets six instead of one. He gets six women instead of one woman. And I'm going to close there. Y'all can think about that for a while. Uh, next week we'll be studying more about David. And uh, we're going to start our next study, Lesson 17, which is chapter 26 in the, uh, in the uh, book of 1 Samuel. I'm not going to pass that out for next week. But that's what we're going to be studying next week. We'll start, finish chapter 20, uh, 26. That's the wrong one. We're going to start 27, yeah. No, we'll start 26. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we are going to start 26, aren't we? All right. God bless you. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have it.